station, Adventist Reflections. Now, to discuss character building ideas, here is your host, Dr. Denzi. Hi family, welcome back to the Adventist Reflections Podcast. Greetings to our listeners from Canada. I trust that these reflections have been as much a blessing for you to listen as it is for me to prepare them. This week is week 10 of our family season series and is entitled Little Times of Trouble. This is such a cunningly crafted title, and I love it. If you follow our past quarter series on the book of the Apocalypse, you would have heard at least more than once the idea of having troublesome times, and with it one cannot dismiss the verse in Revelation 14.12 that says, Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God, and the faith of Jesus. But how does this relate to today's lesson? Well, in today's lesson we will talk about anger and conflict resolution. So patience becomes a relevant matter. Perhaps not the patience that Revelation is talking about, but it matters. When thinking of anger and conflict, In Matthew 5.22, Christ says some provocative yet crucial words for the ethos of the Christian. Whoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. The key aspect here is that unless we control our words and temper, We become slaves to our emotions, and ultimately we become slaves to the enemy of Christ, and by default, as a Christian, your own enemy. This is one of the reasons why Paul said in Romans 12.21, Do not let evil overcome you, but overcome evil by good. Now, Here is an interesting reflection. When you think about what Christ said in relation of being angry with someone else, have you ever found someone who thinks that he or she was angry without justification? Think about it. When you have been angry with your spouse or your child or your relative, your neighbor, perhaps you have been angry with a co-worker, your boss or a schoolmate, perhaps your BFF. Do you ever think that you were wrong? By default, when you get angry with somebody, it is because you either consciously believe you are right against whatever someone has said or done to you, or because your subconscious defense mechanisms believe that you must react to something that goes against yourself. So, what is the trick to overcoming anger and allowing yourself to engage in a safe conflict resolution process? Well, whilst there might be many ways to do this, today I would like to present only a few practical pointers that might help you or someone else in your journey. In fact, if you know someone who struggles with anger, why don't you go ahead and when you finish this podcast, share it with the rest of your world? Today's reflections come on the shape of the acronym ANGER, that is A-N-G-E-R, ANGER. Acknowledge, notice, grow, exercise, and resolve. A. A stands for acknowledge. Here, it is important to acknowledge that anger is a normal human emotion. In fact, that is why our acronym today is using the same lexicon. I want us to dust off this important human feeling. You see, anger is not harmful. It's not an emotion that goes beyond our human emotions. Unless it goes beyond your control, then it becomes harmful. Anger is not the same as violence. But anger, if not control, can lead to violence. Moreover, if anger is not kept in check, 
it can bring within long-lasting resentment and might cause broken relationships regardless of how close or tight that relationship once was. So, anger is tricky, but it's not necessarily abnormal. As we observe, indeed, anger is a normal emotion just like sadness, surprise, happiness, anticipation, etc, etc, etc. Yes, anger is part of your array of mechanisms to defend yourself when either you or someone else is being treated with harm that can be either physical or even ideological. This is the same mechanism that kicked in Jesus' limbic system as he observed the merchants and leaders making business in his father's temple. This was a harmful practice that was dishonoring his father, his presence, but also the people around who observed this bad example. This was a matter of life and death, in fact, a matter of eternal life. This is why Paul said in Ephesians 4.26, not to let your anger bring you to sin. When you think about the normality of anger, you can see that it makes sense for Paul to be inspired by God, to acknowledge that as human emotional beings, we do experience this feeling and that it is not a sinful thing to do so. N. N stands for notice. Notice when you are getting angry and in need of cooling down. Here is where the rubber meets the road, where the plank gets solid. In fact, here is where the beginning of anger resolution is found. You see, whilst anger is a normal emotion based on normal neurophysiological reactions, this emotion can range from mild annoyance to intense and uncontrolled rage, as it is in the case of domestic violence situations. So, our tasks to begin our healing process from being uncontrollably or unconsciously angry is to number one, notice when you are getting angry before it goes out of hand. Number two, notice the level of anger that you are experiencing. And number three, notice if you need professional help. Some of you might be asking, but how do I do that? Let me ask you some simple self-reflective questions. Do people tell you that you are angry all the time? Do people tell you that you are usually grumpy? Do people say that you are very hard to please? Do you find yourself constantly being irritated by others and even justify that it is because, quote, everyone else is stupid? If you answer yes to any of these questions, likelihood is that you are having a greater level of anger than most people need to experience and that this anger many times was justified by your own thinking and perhaps justified by your unconscious mind, it is unlikely to be justified by most people and therefore falls outside of the range of normality and even more so, it is not letting you live a fulfilled life, a life filled with joyful moments if you were not to experience this level of anger, here and now. The next letter in our acronym is G for GROW. Yes, you see, if you've reflected and noticed that you have an anger management problem, it is important to grow as a person by acknowledging it, by identifying when your emotions are taking the best out of who you are and do something about it. There are two simple body checks that you can do to grow in identifying when your anger is creeping up. Number one, is your heart pumping faster than usual? And number two, are your muscles feeling more tense? For example, you find you're clenching your fists or biting your teeth and tensing your jaw. These two physical reactions are directly linked to our fight, flight, or freeze responses. And if you have a tendency to lose your cool, the likelihood is that you won't be flying or freezing, but rather fighting your way through verbally, physically, or perhaps even to the point of rage and abuse. If you are in this category, where you seem to be getting into various trouble, tending to argue your points as you escalate your voice, 
maybe even using physical force to resolve your conflict, or using physical threats or actions to get your way. Raging on the streets as you drive because, quote, everyone else doesn't know how to drive. Then, the likelihood that you need to see a professional, like a counselor or even a psychologist, is very high. Do not let your pride rob you from the best you got to offer to your family, to your church, and to your community. If you noticed that you need help, seek for it and be helped. As a psychologist, if I were able to share with you the amount of people who have anger management problems and who seek help, you would discover that this problem does not discriminate class, wealth, or education. I will go a bit farther on here because it is needed. I encourage you to not let the devil rob you from your eternal life because of your anger being out of control. Perhaps you are not the type of person that enrages in his or her anger, but you are one of those silent, undercover, self-justifying strugglers who keep your emotional anger in silence, using passive aggressiveness to make your point, and in doing so, experiencing some kind of resentment that goes beyond what God desires for you. It is here that I would like to introduce the next concept. The letter is letter E, exercise. So, after you acknowledge the normality of experiencing anger, but then also notice that you are beyond the scope of normality and is getting out of control, it is important for you to exercise your free will, your capacity to choose, and exercise the gift of forgiveness. This involves to ask for forgiveness, to forgive, and to be forgiven. You see, the same text we read earlier in Ephesians 4.26 where Paul gives clue to the normality of anger, continues saying, Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. You see, Paul is saying it will be of no benefit for you to continue in such a state of anger, fury, and resentment. This makes sense since, after all, Jesus said in Matthew 5.24, Hey, look, when you come to me asking for forgiveness, when you come to the Father to say, I'm sorry, don't just come as if nothing happened. First, go and make peace with your brother with your sister, with your husband, your wife, your kid, with your neighbor, with your workmate, with your schoolmate, with whoever you have to make peace. And then come back to me to make peace and ask for forgiveness. This sounds tough, doesn't it? Well, how about Christ even sharing with us Matthew 6, 14 and 15, saying that if we do not forgive our brethren, neither will our Father in heaven forgive us. This makes sense. Even, even going back to the Lord's Prayer, it isn't hard to see that we must exercise forgiveness by forgiving and asking for forgiveness. Think about it. In Matthew 6, 12 and Luke 11, 4, Christ says that as we pray, we might refer to the principle of asking for forgiveness from God the Father as we forgive our debtors. This implies a two-stepwise process we forgive and we ask for forgiveness. As you can see, exercising sound anger management strategies includes the crucial aspect of asking for forgiveness and goes beyond the here and the now. You might be facing consequences from struggling with your anger in the shape of broken relationships, perhaps losing a job and even experiencing other physiological or mental health struggles such as depression and anxiety. However, the greatest consequence of all is that of not crossing the bridge of salvation to meet your Savior and obtain eternal life. It is of no wonder then that Paul continues saying in Ephesians 4.27 after he said in verse 26 that anger is normal and not to let the day finish without solving our anger, he then concluded that this is necessary because if we do not do so, we are giving the devil a foothold that in fact will threaten our salvation. Our last letter for today is letter R. 
resolve. So you have acknowledged the normality of anger, but then you have noticed that you have an issue with anger. You have grown to identify when this is taking over your conscious rationale and have asked for forgiveness whenever you messed up, both to those whom you violated either actively or passive aggressively. And now we come to the prophylactic aspect. We come to the prevention in the shape of resolve, that is, in the shape of conflict resolution. So, what is conflict? And are there any biblical principles for this? Well, I would like you to digest today's podcast and come back this Wednesday as we release a special episode focusing on biblical strategies for conflict resolution. We'll talk about the process. As I farewell you, I encourage you to exercise your God-given human willpowers and combine them with the divine help of God to succeed in controlling your emotions so that you too may not let the sun fall whilst your anger, resentment, and passive aggressiveness remains. Today, today I choose to love God and live a life of forgiveness where I forgive others and I live forgiven. What about you? This is Dr. Dancy and you listened to the Adventist Reflections Podcast, your podcast. Remember to subscribe to this podcast, like it, share it, hashtag it, comment, and find us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, and Tumblr as Adventist Reflections. God bless you.